What do you guys want? <laughs> How's the foot? What happened exactly? I kicked his elbow like four or five times. Shit hurts, man. Fucking the man. That's awesome. You know, I think uh, it was a lot more satisfying, obviously, fighting Gilbert. Um, I think winning the title, if I would have beat Clay, <clears throat> um, really wouldn't have meant as much. This means so much more, um, being someone like Gilbert. So I have, more, I have a, lot, a lot of respect for him. Um, he's obviously a close friend of mine. And, uh, you know, I actually uh, respect him a lot. I admire him a lot. I think uh, had I lost, I would have walked away being with my head high and uh, happy because, you know, he's such a great person. So, you know, I was out there having fun. You know, it was, to me, this, this fight was all about having fun. There was no pressure on me to win this fight. It was all on him. You know, I mean, a three to, I was a 3 one underdog, from what I understand. So there was no pressure on me to win this fight. I came in, smiled, had a great time. You know, I could really give a shit. I could have, like I said, if I'd have lost this fight, I would have walked away with my head high, just knowing that he's a great person, he's a great champ. You know, but uh, today was my night, and um, and I'm actually so much happier for myself. <laughs> Shoulder was great, man. Actually, I, I prepared myself mentally for that. Um, what I did, what I wasn't, um, I didn't really prepare for was I got sick a lot during training camp. I got a staph infection. I got sick two weeks in a row. I'm actually still sick right now. I was on antibiotics uh, all this week. Um, I had to get permission to get an inhaler this week to get rid of the congestion. So I've been sick all for about two weeks now, plus a staph infection. So three weeks of my training camp was I was on antibiotics. So that kind of sucked. I guess it's really hard to say. Like with uh, <clears throat> with Javier Mendez, you know, as my coach, it's really he really works out game plans for fighters. You know, and I don't really know how to explain it. <clears throat> when you li when I listen to him, I win. And uh, you saw a little bit of that with Kung Lee and Frank. And uh, he gave Kung the, the the game plan, and Kung stuck to it, and he won. I game out with the game plan, and I stuck to it, and I won. You know, it's really hard uh, to lose when he's in your corner. Um, I didn't listen in the clay fight. Um, and it cost me the fight. Um, everyone tells me, you know, he fought a great fight, and I tell everyone that I lost that fight because I didn't listen in my corner. So I regret that moment to this day. There was, I was no way I was going to lose this fight. Not a chance. Not, not one chance. I trained too hard for this fight. Um, when I was sick, I trained. When I had staff, I trained. I trained too hard for this fight. I wasn't going to lose. As long as I went out there and listened to the game plan and had fun. Once I got serious, <clears throat> once it could turn into a serious fight and I started really uh, <clears throat> thinking about the fight and the pressure that he was putting on, it, I would have lost the fight. But this is a... Uh, this was my fight. You saw it from the moment I walked out there. You know, I could see the smile on my face to the to the halfway through the third round. I was still smiling. Okay, this this was my fight. There was no way I was gonna lose for some reason. You know, everyone looked at what I said as being negative and how I talked to the media and I was sick and this and that and giving excuses. All it was, you guys call for the truth and I give you guys the truth and then you guys flip the script and say, you know, well, it's, you're already looking at the negative side. You're already looking for a way out when you lose. Bullshit. You guys call. You guys want to know the truth? I give you the truth. But I said, no matter what, I'm going to come out here and fight. That's the way I am. I, I fight, no matter what. I've never given up, and I always fight to the end. That's just me. How'd you stay so uh, I didn't figure it out until the second round. <laughs> I was like, eh, it's working. He's landing, so I kept throwing it, you know? Um, then he came, he got keen to it, started to come with the overhand right, caught me a couple times, obviously, looking at my eye. Um, but then, uh, you know, I started switching up. Inside the leg, outside the leg, inside the body. Push kick to the face, a little bit of here, a little bit of there, you know. And just try to change the levels. You know, the whole game plan actually to this fight was stay on the outside, make him reach and get the takedown. You know, I uh, worked a lot on my wrestling. Josh Kostick helped me a lot on my wrestling. I owe a lot of this fight to him. And, uh, you know, and Javier was in my corner the whole time, you know, just yelling and screaming. Just, you know, do what you got to do. He, we knew the game plan. Like I said, if I didn't listen, I would have lost. I listened, I won. It's bottom line. Speaking of his takedowns, were you surprised he didn't shoot more after you during that fight, especially no. when you were peppering him? I think after two rounds, I think after two rounds of uh, him trying to shoot, he shot in the first round twice, I saw both takedowns, and uh, both times when he shot and he backed out, I caught him with good knees. That'll make you not want to shoot, you know, and he never calls from when we train together. The one, the one, one of the two weapons that I have, which is really good, is my knees. You know, you ask any guy, any guys, Mike Swick, didn't fight in the UFC because I caught him with a good knee. You know, I got bony ass little knees because I'm so small, and, and they find the mark. So that was the one thing I can say is, you know, and he remembers that. You know, like I said, there was little things that he remembers about when we trained, and he knew. So if he jumped in there, he was gonna get caught with something. So that's why he stayed on the outside, and I, he overcommitted every once in a while. When he did, I made him pay. Anytime he wants.
I will fight next fight. I have so much respect for him. And the other thing too as well is I wasn't happy with the turnout for the fans here tonight. So I think next time we'll get a bigger crowd. <clears throat> you know, um, it's hard to sell lightweights, and everyone knows that. That's why the UFC dumped us a while ago. You know, that's why shows really have a hard time. I don't know how well the KJ Nunes and Yu's fight did, but you can't. It's hard to build lightweight fights. You know, I don't blame organizations for not putting this as main events. You know, it really doesn't bother me. You know, I didn't plan on. I, didn't, I mean, I tried being the main event for this fight. You know, obviously the the crowd turned out. You know, I mean, half of them were probably my family. <laughs> so it's like, but whatever. You know, I, I think we'll get a bigger crowd next time. You know, um, my deal is to fight the best guys. So whoever they put in front of me right now, I think I have three fights left. Um, <clears throat> it'll bounce around though, because there's some uh, some guys that I want to have brought in to fight me. Um, some bigger names, some but not that Gilbert's not a big name. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. But um, just I want to fight some guys outside of our organization brought in. Who would that be? Any of them could be from from Half Gracie to you know to a Gomi to anybody else that we can't brought in. I want to fight top guys, you know. I don't want to fight anyone that's not in the top ten. You know, I've made, I've made, committed, recommitted myself to the sport and my life, and uh, I want to fight the best. I think I try to, I try to show that tonight. Show it tonight, Jim. Oh, painful. <laughs> it's a good pain, though, right? Yeah, right. <laughs>